friends, welcome back to another video. This is LA Archives. My name is Mila. Roll the intro. So, today's video is going to be me recommending books you can read in French. Um, depending, it will be split up in age groups, basically. So the first, I'm just going to tilt this down. First group I have is grades one to three. This is mainly for those who are in French immersion. Um, these are very easy, very easy to understand, very simple books. First one I'm going to recommend is a series called La Cabane Magique by Mary Pop Osborne. Um, this is actually a translation from the original English series called Magic Treehouse. This is a very popular series in English, especially for those who are readers but can't exactly access the big, big books yet. So this is a good transitional book to start with if you're if you know French and you can read, but you want something a bit of a challenge. So this one follows siblings Tom, Tom and Lea in French, and they find this cabin magic, this magic tree house in the forest next to their house, and they go on various adventures, and it's a really fun series. I grew up reading it, although I read it in English, but it's really fun. The only difference between the English one and the French one is the names of the characters. So in the English one, it's Jack and Annie. In the French one, it's Tom and Leah. So that's book number one. The next book I'm going to translate, uh, recommend, is Le Petit Prince by Antoine de Saint-Exupéry. Did I say that right? Yeah, by Antoine de Saint Exupéry. Um, this one follows a little boy who's the little prince, and he goes on various adventures across various planets. He meets various characters. Um, yeah, it's a really easy, fun book. Um, I will mention this later on with. A specific explanation as to why it appears twice in this video but yes this is um, a very fun one it's very easy it's a good bedtime story um, there's a movie I uh, highly recommend you can watch it in English or in French um, yeah, so that's book number two book number three is a translation another translation this is this Dogman series, and this is about a policeman who's half dog, half man. He goes on these various adventures, and um, my brother has read it in English, but there's a French translation, so if you like the English ones, you can read it in French as well. Even if it's the same thing, it'll help you. The next one, so that's book number three. The next one I'm gonna, I'm going to recommend is a bit more challenging, but it will be still fun. Next one I'm gonna recommend is Asterix. Asterix follows the adventures of a, a Gaulois, a Gaul. I think that's what it is. Um, a Gaul. Yeah, who are trying to defend their land from the Romans. So there's a little bit of history sprinkled in there. And a lot of the names, actually, my friend teacher told me, a lot of the names are grammatical symbols. Like, they're, they're symbols. So Asterix is a little star. Uh, Obelix is who's Asterix's best friend. Um, oh, seeing obi it's a pun on the French word obelisk, which is a big uh stone pillar. We'll put a picture. 
So this has, this is a fun one. There's a movie and there's a TV show. You can also watch after reading the books. The next one I'm going to recommend is the ever-loved Les Aventures de Tintin by Hergé. So this one follows Tintin, who is a young journalist, and he has a dog. We all love dogs, don't we? Um, and he goes on various adventures. He goes to various places. And there is a original TV show in French. It's a cartoon. It's a cartoon TV show. And then there's also this 3D-ish film that came out some time ago. Um, I'll put a picture. Um, it follows a specific book, though. It follows about the secrets of the Les, Les Secrets de la Lica, which is a ship. Um, so that's for grades one, two, three. Now we go to grade four to six. First two are again a repeat Asterix and Tintin. The reason I'm recommending these again is because you might understand more of what's happening once you're older and you have more experience in French. Okay, so the next one I'm going to recommend is called Amandine Adore la Cuisine and it is by Dia Lim and uh, this one follows a young girl named Amandine and she uh, works so her parents are both pastry chefs and she sort of goes through this it's sort of like a coming of age story and um, yeah a lot of fun it's actually i think it's um a series pretty sure and it's canadian that i am 100 percent certain of yeah it's several so amandine adore la cuisine amandine adore la galette des rois le gâteau de mariage la tarte à la citrouille okay. mes amis à la boulangerie and la limonade rose <laughs> So that one's really fun. It's very easy to read. Wait. And maybe you'll have. It's okay, you put on my Maybe you'll have Ooh. the want to make something yummy. <laughs> so the next one is called Les Malheurs de Sophie, and this is actually Whoa. was written a very long time ago, but it's still a children's book. This one is by Comtesse de Ségur. This one follows a young girl named Sophie, and she is a troublemaker. But you learn things that you shouldn't shouldn't do. For example, setting your doll's hair on fire with a hair straightener. Or a straightener of some sort. But I'm sort of referring to the TV show. There is a TV show. It's in French, originally. It's very fun. Uh, there are 20 minutes-ish episodes and the French is very easy to understand. Next one I'm going to recommend is called Les Méchants. This is actually another translation book. The English translation is Bad Guys. So if you liked the Bad Guys book or the recent Bad Guys movie that came out, you might want to check out the same version in French. The next one is a very, it's a fairly popular series called L'Agent Jean. This one. <laughs> this one. Uh huh. No, silly goose. So this is a comic. No, sorry. This is a graphic novel in Bande Dessinée. Oh, sorry. And this one is inspired by James Bond, so it's very much spy sort of thing. And they just get up to a lot of trouble, and it's fun. Oh, oh. Um. What? I don't mind. I said. Let's shoot you. The coinage. 
The next one is going back to traditional sort of works. This one is Comte de la Marche d'Oeil by Charles Perrault. This one is... Hey, I'm filming! <laughs> this one is full of stories like La Belle Bois d'Enfant or Sleeping Beauty, Cendrillon or Cinderella, and Le Petit Chaperon Rouge, aka Red Riding Hood. So this one is, the English translation is Tales of Mother Goose. Cool. Um, so yeah, if you want a bit of a challenge, but still in your age range, grade range, uh, this yeah. is one. The next one I'm going to recommend is actually a, an originally English novel. It's categorized as middle grade. I love you. I, I love you too. It's categorized as middle grade in English. Alice, okay. This one is called Skandar et le voleur de la licorne or Skandar and the Unicorn Thief by A.F. Stedman. This follows a young boy named Skandar who each year when you when you turn 13 you get to pass you have to pass a hatchery exam which and if you do you get sent to the island where you can find your unicorn which has actually been hatching alongside your 13 years of living so it's fun it's a bit predictable but it should be good for those that also want a little bit of challenge the next Age range is grades 7 and 8. Um, this is usually going into the territory of either French extended or full French. So, if you're in either of those, keep watching. So this one is the first one I'm going to recommend is Comte de la Jean de la Fontaine. Um, these are simple stories. And um, while they're simple, they you can it can they can help you very much learn new vocabulary. And just like Charles Perrault with with his stories, this one can also help you uh, learn more bedtime stories and where they actually came from. The next one is one I read when I was was hey. Don't go throwing socks at me, Missy. I'm gonna throw a sock at you. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm gonna throw a sock at you, Miss. What the fuchka? The next one is one that I read in grade. Eight for my grade 8 French class. This was when I started um, a full French school. Um, Missy, I'm working here. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I'm working here. Oi. This one is called Amos d'Aragon. It's a series. The first one is called Le Porteur des Masques. This one follows a young boy named Amos d'Aragon. And he goes on various adventures. Um, the first one has to do with... Um, oh man, what is it called? It's like the chicken... No, sorry, not the chicken, the basilisk. Because if you look in uh, Basilisk's eye, you'll turn the stone similar to what happens in Medusa. The only thing that will defeat a basilisk is the sound of a rooster. What sound does a rooster make? <laughs> so that one is also a bit of a challenge but if you're up for it i highly recommend and there are several books so it'll keep you entertained for a while the next age range is grades 9 to 12 again this follows this is mainly for those that are in full french and don't know what to read so there's that this one this one is going to be 
a general author recommendation. It's uh, Guillaume Musso. He is a French mystery writer. Um, he's very, very popular. If you ask your French teachers who Guillaume Musso is, they will know. Um, the one I liked the most was La Fille et la Nuit. The funny thing about Guillaume Musso's books is that in almost every book, the main character is a writer. <laughs> so it's a common theme. So if you like the sort of books and books and books kind of thing, authors writing about authors, um, this one, and if you want mysteries and fast-paced mysteries, as well as a range of vocabulary that's there for you to learn. This one is a good one. La jeune fille la nuit follows. Uh, it's called The Reunion in English. This one follows a young woman who disappeared and then years later there's a mystery about where she disappeared, what the heck, ha what actually happened. And we have the main character who's a writer who's an author and he has to figure out the stuff for his next book and he or as a self-explanatory thing. So that's one. So the next one is a general author recommendation is Joel Dicker. This one is, he's also fairly popular for his book, uh, La Vérité sur l'affaire Harry Kébert. Okay. Um, so again, a bit of a challenge. Uh, this is for the fans of Guillaume Musso, you can read Joel Dicker for fans of Joel Dicker. You can read Guillaume so. The next one, we're going to go back in time a bit and look towards the classics. And I know you're probably thinking, oh, classics, they're so difficult. Actually, contrary to popular belief, these aren't that difficult. And you don't have to read the long 500 or so pages where half the time the character is stuck in a prison on an island for like 10 years and he's plotting his revenge. That's the plot of Le, Con Le Conte de Monte Cristo. <laughs> no, 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 we're not talking about it. We're talking about Jules Verne. Jules Verne, or Jules Verne in English, if you will, is known as the sort of father of modern um, science fiction, basically. And he has a lot of books. Most notably, you have um, Journey to the Center earth mysterious island um journey to the center of earth mysterious island you have around the world in 80 days Twenty Thousand leagues under the sea um my mom's favorite is uh les enfants de captain Gras, which is the castaways in english i think <laughs> okay so yeah the next one is going to be again a classic french author victor hugo he has a couple of like sort of shorter stories so you can start by looking at that uh one is le dernier jour d'un condamné um victor hugo was very much so um victor hugo was very much an activist at this time he was against the death penalty um and Le Dernier Jour d'un Condamné is one I read in 12th grade French literature. I enjoyed it as far as one of these goes. The other one that you could think of is of course Les Miserables or okay The Hunchback of Notre Dame is another one um that you can read by Victor Hugo. It's less dense than Les Miserables. Next one is I mentioned it earlier in this video, it's called Le Petit Prince by Antoine de Saint-Exupéry. The reason I'm explaining this, uh, uh, I'm recommending this again, is because when you're younger and you read Le Petit Prince, you might not understand the story fully. You might see it as, oh, it's a, about a little boy who's a prince and he's just traveling. But in reality, there's a second there's another layer to it. So once you're a bit older and you have more of a grip on the French language, you can read this one again and hopefully you will find the nuances of this book a bit more understandable and a bit more interesting. So there's always, there's always, there's plenty of videos about this, there's plenty of essays about it, 
friend that you have articles about it. So if anything you're confused, Google's your best friend, trust me. The next one is a popular series in Canada, especially among uh, Quebecois and those that grew up in French families, like Francophone families, Les Chevaliers des Maraudes. This one is uh, the Knights of the Emerald. This one is by Anne Robillard. This is Canadian. This one has, uh, I don't know how many this has, uh, 12 books, uh, 5 have been translated into English, but this one is a fantasy book, if you want to get lost in fantasy. I figured that the first book would be a bit difficult to get through, seeing that it's the first book and you're supposed to sort of set up the world, but I imagine that once you finish the first book and continue on, you'll just have to keep track of the characters and the plot and not that much world building. So again, if you want to put your French to the test, this is the one. Uh, the next one is one I read in grade 10. Keep in mind, I this was still at the time when I was in a French school, so everything was in French, except obviously English class, but everything was in French. This one is called Armée, L'Armée Furieuse by Fred Varga. Um, this is sort of like a mystery, sort of has some fantasy elements on it. So this one does have an English translation. This one. The Ghost Riders of Ordebec. Ordebec. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, there's someone who has a vision of a bunch of horsemen. And um, yeah. If you find that it's too difficult in French, you can always get the English one and sort of flip back and forth. That's what I did because I was like, I don't understand a lot of this. Please help me. So I found the English version at my library. Uh, the next, I don't want to say age range because it's not really an age range, but those that really want to challenge themselves we have Les Fiancés de l'Hiver. This is a quartet, originally in French. There is a English translation of all four books, I believe. This one follows a young girl, well, a young woman, uh, who gets engaged to this very cold guy and she has to venture through the politics of this sort of palace where she's now living and she has this power where she can sort of um if she touches an object see, she can sort of see their past so it's very much fantasy uh four books i believe next one is la ville saint Van. this is a duology this one how do i explain this <laughs> i'm trying to read it and even I, I i don't have a clue of what's going on. Hold on, give me a second. La Ville Saint Vin. I think it's two books for now, but. Oh, it's again, it's fantasy, and there's like a mage society, and there's a death, and the main character, Lestianax has to figure out how their mentor died. Um, and again, politics, fantasy, magic, all that fun stuff. Cover is really cool. I, I gotta hand it to the cover. Cover looks really awesome. And to the other one. The next one is one that <laughs> I opened the first page of the book and I immediately closed it. This one is called La Horde du Contrevin. I cannot, for the life of me, tell you what it's actually about because it is. There's a lot of play on words, there's a lot of puns, 
So if you're planning on reading this, make sure you have a French teacher you can ask questions to. Because this is a challenge and a half. My friend read it. But the thing is, is that at school, all our teachers speak French. And this was specifically for her French lit class. So her, the teacher, who I had French lit as well, um, actually helped her figure out all the puns and stuff. So make sure you have someone you can ask questions to. Or you can use Google, but you never know what's going to come up because it depends. The next one is, um, I wouldn't say they're particularly challenging, but the next one is Don Juan by Molière. Uh, this one is a classic. It is a play of sorts. So, um, yeah, this is a play by Molière. This is classic French. Um, and there is a musical, which is pretty cool, actually. I recommend you watch it. It has some pretty cool songs. Uh, and that is it for today's video, friends. Be sure to like, subscribe, click the bell icon. I post on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at the moment. So uh, be sure to check my Instagram, my blog, my Medium. Check out our book club Discord page. And as usual, Keep reading. Bye. Я делаю работу и тихо. Что ты делаешь? Next one is a very, it's a fairly popular series called La Jean Jean. This one. La Jean <laughs> This one. What's up? What's up? What's up?